What's up guys, YST here and welcome back to another Raid Shadow Legends video. And today, the Pythion Fusion is live in game, like you see here in the summoning portal, where we're going to need 100 fragments to complete this fusion, which a lot of you guys from my community poll yesterday actually said you was going for him, so that's very, very cool. I believe he's a very, very strong champion in this game from personal playtesting. I'll try to get a guide out on him, maybe over the weekend, leading into early next week. But from what I've seen so far, he's a phenomenal champion to be a fusion. Now, what we're going to be doing in today's video is breaking down the fusion event calendar, which I'm going to pull up right here. I'm, I'm going to kind of go through strategies of the ways that I'm going to be tackling this, and hopefully it can help you guys in the works. And if you do enjoy these kind of videos, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button so I know to keep on doing these for the future fusions if you find them helpful. But all right, let's just get straight into it. I'm going to stay on this side of the screen because I don't want to be blocking off the total fragments, which is actually 155, like you see here at the bottom. But that right here is including the 40 fragments from tournament leaderboards. Now, what does that mean? It basically means the players that come top place or second place traditionally in those tournaments, which I kind of tend to ignore. Like I brush them aside. I can't be relying on those because if you're in a, a kind of group with whales, there's just no chance in competing, right? So I believe the best way to go around this is focus on the tournaments and events that everybody can participate in without that extra value on top of fighting for first place. And for that, it's actually going to be 60 plus 51, so 115 fragments in total available to complete this fusion. And I actually think it's pretty good to have some leeway, because now you can actually skip some of the events that you might be having troubles with, such as a champion chase tournament, or if you run out of energy towards the end. It's just good to know that there's 15 fragments that you can kind of play around with. But alright, let's kick this off. So starting today, there's going to be an Ice Golem tournament, as you see right here where you're going to be able to get five fragments plus the five from the top of the leaderboard. I'm not going to keep repeating that because you can see that in green. And that's going to be coinciding with the champion training event, which has a one extra day duration than the Ice Golem. Now, what I do see here is that there's a Dungeon Diver starting tomorrow on Friday the 13th, which is actually the same day as the free-to-play series. Uh, make sure you guys check that out on my channel as well because I'll be participating in the HH challenge. And if we just head into the game right here, I'm going to try to do some little deep dives in between. Uh, forgive me, guys, if you don't like that kind of stuff. So we go into the tavern. Now, what I kind of entice place to do is, well, for me personally, um, so if you just head down into any of the champions, let's just say um, an epic champ. So boom. Let's just say we want a golden reaper. Now, what I like to do is I like to take them up to like level 15. And I do this for like a bunch of champions throughout my vault and stuff. All the ones that I'm going to use as food later on. And these are going to give me some points towards those champion training tournaments, right? So if we head down here, the champion training event. That just got me 51 points and all of the points are down here below. And what I tend to do is while the actual event is live, before the dungeon divers, I'll use the ones that I chose to brew up in that first day, right? And then I like to double dip when the dungeon diver starts for my campaign battles. So in that way, you're actually double dipping with the artifacts you're getting from the campaign battles, plus you're actually leveling up your champions. But you also have to bear in mind that the Ice Golem tournament needs to be done as well. So you can actually double dip both if you save it for one day, like down here. So boom, into the Saturday. You can actually complete the Ice Golem within that period too and double dip the Dungeon Divers to get that done a lot more efficiently. But of course, if you just want to go full out Ice Golem and then brew up some champions, that's completely fine. But the way that I'm going to be doing is double dipping tomorrow into the Friday the 13th and the Saturday. And then, of course, brewing up some champions in this first day here for the champion training. Um, so, all right. So the next day, I'm going to change some colors around so you guys don't get confused. Um, we will then have a champion chase tournament that will be starting tomorrow as well, which is going to be a 2x Ancients, which I'm actually very happy Raid done it in this way. Sometimes in previous fusions, they do stuff like over the 2x events, they do a summon rush. And it's like, damn, I really wish that I could have pumped my 2x events into the champion chase because ancient shards don't get a lot of value in the summon rush like you see down here, right? You get around 20 points, I believe. So it's good that we can save up our sacred shards and our voids for the summon rush and then use our ancient shards for the champion chase tournament, which is pretty cool in my personal opinion, right? 
Now, I did see in the previous fusion with the Nishak Vermin Lord, a lot of you was upset that there was no champion chase, and you've been saving up all of these fragment fusions uh, in the summoning portal to actually get free points, in a sense, from the past fusions and events. So, this could be a good time to actually manipulate those points and get some easy ones in this champion chase and get that done a lot more efficiently if you've got some saved up, right? Potentially, if you haven't done some of the fragment fusions in the past. So, okay, um, this is all going to be ending on the, before the Monday. So let's just lock this off here with the orange line. So, boom. Now, from here, we actually have a classic arena starting on the Saturday, leading into the Monday as well. And this one is self-explanatory. You just do the classic arena battles, take some teams down, you get to the top of the leaderboard or the milestone rewards, claim up your fragments, and then get on your bike and carry on. So, also starting on that day, it's going to be, let's just change the colors again. Look at me, guys. I should be the next artist for the Louvre in Paris. <laughs> so with the Classic Arena is actually an artifact enhancement tournament. Now, hopefully you guys have been saving up some silver because this can be very resource intensive and very costly. As many of you guys are aware, you can get through one piece and spend four million silver on occasions. So hopefully you've prepped some silver like we mentioned in previous videos, taking them up to like 15 or taking them up to 11 in preparation for the one extra upgrade on those artifacts and accessories. So, also on top of that, we will be having the Ice Golem before that, so you might be able to get some of your silver from that tournament and use the artifacts that you sell that you didn't want to pay for the artifact enhancement straight afterwards, right? So, all right. Um, next one here, we're going to be leading into an extra duration. So this will be going into the Tuesday on the Fire Night, which has no double dipping in events because the Dungeon Divers will be finishing on the Monday morning. So on the Wednesday, we'll actually be kicking off with the Champion Training Tournament. So not the event, right? And on top, obviously, it's very similar to a Champion Training uh, event. You just rank up your champions and probably coincide with the Dungeon Divers, right? Right here. If you're doing more campaign battles and that's how you like to rank up your champions, of course, double dip and get as many points as possible. But if you're a player that likes to brew up, that's completely fine. It's a great strategy if you've got them available, which opens up the opportunity to use your energy on a spider tournament. Because, of course, it's very hard to have a lot of energy in this game if you're not stacked on resources. So spider tournament, double dip in here with the Dungeon Divers events. And this one should be pretty simple as long as you've got the energy and you're farming an efficient stage. Because we need to speak about efficiency in terms of energy. Like if we head into the dungeons, let's just say hypothetically you've come into the game. Welcome to the community, by the way, if this is your first ever fusion. Hopefully it goes well for you. Um, if you see here on stage 10, we actually start to get four to five star accessories instead of three to five star. And you'll get a lot more value in return for your energy at the same energy cost from doing stage 10 than you would do from stage nine. Okay. And then, of course, if you're feeling brave today and you want to try push up some extra stages which i entice you to do you will actually start to unlock four to six stars from stage 13. now once you get to the six star accessories you'll start to see a great value because you get a lot more points for this in those dungeon divers events and if you're doing stage 25 you might want to look towards doing stage 24 potentially saving that two energy costs per run and you can kind of carry the same theme into all of the dungeons just for efficiency if you don't have a lot of resources right so yeah um, double dip with the spider tournament should be completely fine there for you guys um, at the same time the spider tournament actually drops the best silver cost in terms of selling accessories and this should help um take off some of the pressure of the artifact enhancement too which you see right below here and you can sell all the accessories that you don't need over this tournament and then boom put it into your artifacts en enhancement and you should be able to completely finish this up in time now classic arena once again very similar we've had that we've seen that earlier on right from the saturday the 14th so that's pretty self-explanatory and then we'll have a summon rush event which traditionally is a 10x event if they kind of follow the same themes and what i like to do is i always like to keep at least seven sacred shards or a blend of five sacreds and a few voids to get this done in the best way possible because the way that i've seen before depending how they do it is they'll put like maybe five to ten fragments in one place and then they'll put another 10 fragments later on for a much higher cost. So if you're one of those players that have a lot of shards and you just don't care anyway, of course. But if you're falling short and you don't have a lot of shards, you might want to consider doing every other event in this fusion and just taking the 5 points from the summon rush. Or whatever that threshold may be. Hopefully they don't, they don't go overkill here, right? Um, keep a bit of pressure off. But we'll just have to wait and see on that regard. 
I will then be leading into a classic arena once again, of course, and then finishing up with a dragon tournament with no dungeon divers to coincide with this. And also, there's a little cheeky one behind me. Let me just move myself out of the way for you. We can go back here. So it will be artifact enhancement free. So if you're just short on five fragments, you're like, what on earth went on there? There is a final tournament to kind of get up those extra fragments there, right? So yeah. So let's just put the double dips down here. And boom, lock this off. And dragon tournament. So just to wrap things up, we can now double dip Ice Golem and Champion Training into the Dungeon Divers if you wish so. If, otherwise, just brew up your champions in the Champion Training event if you've got loads to spare. And just use the Ice Golem Tournament to finish up the Dungeon Divers. We'll then have Classic Arena Artifact Enhancement alongside a Fire Knight, which will be ending um, straight after the Dungeon Divers kind of finishes. It has a little bit of overlap there on the Sunday, I believe. Yep. Then we'll be going into the Champion Training and the Spider Tournament, coinciding with Dungeon Divers 2. Artifact Enhancement again alongside Classic Arena and Summon Rush into the Dragon Tournament, finishing off with Artifact Enhancement 3. So yeah guys, um, that was kind of my wrap up for my guide on the Pytheon uh, Fusion Event Calendar. Uh, let me know if you found this a little bit useful in the ways that you're going to be tackling this, because this is basically the ways that I'll be going. And in terms of the ones that I would recommend skipping out on, or what I'm going to be doing is, I'm not a huge fan of Champion Training Events, right? The tournaments for me seem to be a little bit easier. I don't know why. But with the champion training events, I always find it hard to get to the final fragments. So I think for me personally, I might be skipping like the second half of the champion training event, honestly. I have to wait and see. Well, it is in game right now. Maybe we can have a little look. The champion training event. See down here, 8,000 points. Ah, uh, man. It is 10 fragments. I'll try my best because... 5.3k is very, very high anyway. And to be able to push an extra 3k for the extra 10 fragments. We'll see how it goes, guys. Because I'm actually going to the KSI fight on Saturday. So it's a bit of bad timing for me with the free-to-play series as well. It was supposed to kick off last week. But then loads of things got um, clashed on the other ends. So it is going to be starting tomorrow. I'll be trying to do an episode tomorrow um, to kick things off. Um, hopefully you guys can come join me for that. And then potentially I'll be doing a stream in the evening. And I'll be trying to push as much as possible in that stream. So, yeah. Because I'm not going to be on the Saturday, potentially not the Sunday as well. So I'm definitely going to have a little bit of a, a backlog compared to the other content creators. But it is what it is, right? We'll be trying our best, having fun with it. And what else is going on? Any packs? I've seen it. <laughs> Raid love to do some packs. Wait, what? Sending anniversary coins. So Pytheon Summon Pack. All right. So two Sacreds, 11 Ancients, three Five Star Chickens. Five times Void Shards, no gems is what I'm seeing here. We're getting energy and multi battles. And it's over a 14 day period. I don't, I've never understood why they do this with summon packs, right? They did it with the last vision as well, with the Rat King. Because on day 14, you get another Sacred Shard. And as you guys know, Daredevil is highest value for the summon rush events, but that's in seven days. So. You're not even going to be able to get this in the time that that summon rush comes around, meaning that you're losing points for something that's literally aimed at the Pytheon. Um, who knows? It is how they want to do it, right? But guys, if you did enjoy the video, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. I've actually got another video coming out of Nub Raids in a few hours as well after this video drops. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.